well, 14 days has passed now since we put the um, bitter beer concentrate into the uh, the plastic container here, which holds four gallons, uh, as we've explained before. So now what we're going to do is the second stage, which is to bottle up the beer, which is quite simple actually. So I'm going to go into the container now and we see that the fermentation's finished so I'm going to use this sterilized jug and I'm going to take out enough for um, very carefully I might add because you don't want to disturb the sediment so this is the the raw beer okay so we're going to take this through to the kitchen now uh, where I've got all the things to bottle it up ready okay then Now comes the fun part, we're going to bottle the beer. We've got the jug that we've brought through from the, um, the tub that we've let it ferment in. I'm going to be using two types of bottles here which I've sterilised. One is a glass crown cork bottle holding one imperial pint, one hopes. And uh, this plastic bottle here, the <laughs> modern interloper if you like, or whatever the word is that uh, holds around two pints. This is a, a former Indian tonic uh, bottle and I found them very handy if you don't need to show your beer off to friends and you just want something cheap. It's a squeezy one but it's strong enough to hold the gases. So whichever ones you want to use um, it's entirely up to you. They look nicer in this but if you haven't got anybody to show them off to or give away to uh, and you've got these things then then use them you know. Uh, so what are we going to do? First of all we are going to add, I'm going to go into my little drawer here and I'm going to put some sugar in. Now for each pint we put half a teaspoonful of this sugar, it's not branded, <laughs> half a teaspoonful. So there we are. Through the funnel, you need a funnel like that um, and of course the jug. So what we're going to do now is to fill up the crown cork bottle. Now we need to do this very slowly because it's going to fizz up and we need it to settle and we're going to pour it to about there. Right, okay so what we've got to do now is to let this settle a bit. So while we're doing that I am going to show you how to do this little bottle here. So same process but this time we're going to put a teaspoon full of sugar in because there is nearly two pints. Okay now I've worked out this over a series of months has been about the right measure. Do you want to have a look at that? The right measure to get the right amount of fizz man. You know um, you want a fizzy beer um, that's about right. Be careful not to put more, much more than that in because it will get very very gassy and you'll bring up sediment. Remember with all these beers it takes time to settle for the sediment to settle and the beer to clarify but I'll explain that in a minute. So let's have a go at filling this one up. Okay, so the same thing's happened with this one, so we're going to move back to the crown cork bottle now. Okay, just let that settle a bit. A little bit more in there, it doesn't matter if it goes over. This is why we've got a towel to protect the work surface. And we're just going to fill this up a little bit more now. Doesn't matter, I'm just doing this for camera purposes. Maybe there's a little bit too much in there, so I'm going to just pour a little dribble back just so that it's about there. That's about right. Can you see it fizzing away in there? This is what's um, it's going to happen now. So anyway, this device here, folks, right, very nasty looking piece of kit. It's actually called a crown corker. You can pick these up at car boot sales and your local brewery suppliers for about, I don't know, a fiver or something like that. But you can also buy the hammer type ones which you put on top of the crown cork and you put the thing over and bash it. But the problem is there, of course, the bottles quite often break. So I've invested in this handy little piece of kit here. I'll just bring that up and show it to camera. So basically, 
what you do is you put that over the bottle, go like that, as I will now demonstrate. Here we are then. So making sure the crown cork is straight on top, down like that. Okay, just being careful. And then we have one perfectly bottled beer, which will take, I reckon, well they say leave it 10 days, but I reckon if you leave it 20 days, maybe a month, the longer you leave it the better, but don't leave it more than about three months. But it will mature in the bottle. Fantastic flavour, just as good as the stuff you buy in the pub these days. These kits have come a long, long way. Um, and basically you're going to get beer as good as you're going to get in some of these real ale pubs now. So 30p a pint or whatever the equivalent is where you live. Uh, so I think it's very good value. The whole thing, all it does is takes time to ferment. Um, all I'm going to do in a minute is just take all these bottles along and put them in my shed, which of course I have a lock on, and um, so nobody can get at them and I can drink them all myself. So they're just going to sit in there until they're ready. So let's just fill this last one up. Okay, now we ideally need a little bit more in there. I'm just going to top, tap this up, top this up with a little bit of water just for the, uh, just for camera's sake. Okay, so as you can see it's frothing up again. Make sure that you've got the right lid for these bottles. Very, very tight. Make sure, of course, because they're plastic, that there's no cracks in the bottles. Um, you don't have to be too fussy about cleaning the outsides up, but it is essential with both bottles to sterilise the bottles in very hot water or one of the propriety brands of uh, bottle steriliser. So there we are, there's the two different types of bottle uh, that we've come across. All they need to do now is to go into storage for 15 days. I'll probably try one uh, after 10 because the maturation does differ according to the temperature. I think the cooler it is, the slower they'll mature, but I find that in cooler weather, they actually, or a cooler place to store them, they actually taste better. So there we are, two pints of bitter, or three pints of bitter rather, um, and it's taken me, what, two hours working all just to bottle the whole lot up, uh, prepare everything, and I reckon 30p a pint is very good value indeed. So if you like this one, we may be doing one, uh, a video in the future about uh, homemade wines and things like that. So please do let me know on my site. Please do leave messages if you'd like me to do one on making different types of homemade wine. I have been doing this for quite a lot of years. So uh, I know one or two things about that. I wouldn't say I'm an expert and people probably put me right on various things but this is a very very simple way to make cheap, good cheap beer and uh, it's delicious so there we are if you want to know more please go to my website andrewflintham.co.uk thank you very much for watching and uh, have a nice day